Hello. Not sure if anyone's going to be able to jump on because I did this afternoon time hoping that some people would be able to jump on after church. I was grateful to go to church. Um, so it was nice. We have church right at 930. So um, that's why I wanted to do this a little later in the afternoon. Um, okay, so it is day 15 um, of our 21 days of prayer. It's gone quickly, hasn't it? Uh, and today is Integrity Matters. Um, I was really excited to get this day um, because one time Grace had come for a business meeting in Appleton and she had brought, um, hey Renisha, yay! Um, she had brought a bunch of sheets um, from Monique McLean where we were trying to figure out our values and one of my values was integrity so I was really really grateful that I got to do this day um, so I'm gonna start off by reading her hi grace um, by re I'm glad some people are able to come at one o'clock in the afternoon um, I'm gonna start by reading the Bible verses that she chose and the first one is Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. For the Lord grants wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He grants the treasure of common sense to the honest. He is a shield to those who walk with integrity. So I like that one because there's some promises in there. Treasures of common sense to the honest and a shield to those who walk with integrity. Um, then she has Proverbs 11, verse 3, which is, The integrity of the upright guides them, but the crookedness of the treacherous destroys them. Um, so that's also good, to be guided and um, not destroyed, right? Good deal. <laughs> and then Proverbs 20, verse 7 um, says, The godly walk with integrity. Blessed are their children who follow them. So those are the three verses that Monique had in her book, and I just love them. They all are awesome for this topic. Um, so I wanted to share some of my thoughts as I was going through this and reading. Um, when I think about integrity, I think about somebody's character, um, like a character, of, you know, how they are and the person. Um, and the first thing I thought about is how we all... I, anyway, I think I do, and I'm, I'm imagining most people um, just love people who we can trust. Um, if, oh, honey, there's a towel right by you, okay? I put a kitchen towel there for you. Sorry, Lennon might interrupt this, but okay. So we all love people we can trust, um, people who we know are honest, uh, that we can maybe tell our personal things to, and we know that they're not going to go talking about it to anyone. Um, we love faithful people, we love loyal people, people that we just know are going to be there for us, um, and people who that, you know, if, if they say they're going to do something, that we really believe that they're going to do it, right? I tend to gravitate towards people like that, and I respect them, and I want to be by them, because there's like a sense of security in it for me. Um, that I know that these people are going to come through and, and they're going to be faithful in the things that they say they're going to do. Um, and I think that the reason why, why we like people like that um, is because it's such an aspect of the Lord. It's like one of the aspects of the Lord that is most comforting to me is his faithfulness. Um, to his word and what he says. So if he says he's going to do something, we can we can trust that he is going to do that. And so I just when I think of integrity, I think of character and just people who are trustworthy and honest and they say they say what they mean and they do what they say. Um and so I found I was looking up integrity and she goes, you'll have to watch her video cuz she does talk about the Webster's uh, definition and things like that um, but I was just looking up some quotes and things and um, the one that I thought was was hit me kind of hard is it's what you do when no one is watching um, so integrity you know isn't really what you show 
to people. It's what you really do um, with your own choices and, you know, it's in your heart what you're, what you're doing. Um, and then another one was, it doesn't matter to people as much about what you believe, but about how you behave. And so that's kind of the same thing. Like, I can sit here and tell you all day long, um, you know, that I'm honest or trustworthy trustworthy, or that, you know, I, I honor my word and things like that. But if you've had experiences with me and I haven't done that, then, it do, you know, that's not integrity. Integrity is actually, you know, the way that you behave and the, and the way that you do things. Um, then there was a really nice quote I like that said, Integrity is choosing courage over comfort. Choosing what is right over what is fun, fast, or easy, and choosing to practice our values rather than simply professing them. And I thought that was, that kind of summed it up nicely as well. And then I found a Zig Ziglar quote, which I really just loved. I'm going to share that with you. I was just going off on the quotes here. Sorry, guys, but there were some good ones. They made me think. Um... So it says with, or he says, with integrity, you have nothing to fear since you have nothing to hide. With integrity, you will do the right thing so you will have no guilt. Um, and how freeing is that? Like to look back on, you know, your journey and especially through business to look back on your business and, and the way that you've, um, you know, I look at it like a mountain, like you're climbing this mountain and to get to the top and be able to look down and not have any guilt and have like a full heart that you had integrity in everything that you did on the way there, right? I mean, that that's good stuff, not to look back and have guilt. And I, I just like that quote. Um, okay, honey. Lennon's done eating in case anybody wants to know. Um... So I was trying to think about this in the business realm and integrity and just kind of came up with one example that I've struggled with myself. Um, and so I thought I would just bring this up because it, it probably seems like something so small um, and something that we might all do, but then not realizing that um, we're lacking integrity or like, I don't know, it was just one example that I could think of. And that was the the drawings or the raffles that we sometimes do. Um, I've had a tendency in the past, I'm just going to be honest with you, um, and <laughs> hope you guys will forgive me, but I've had a tendency in the past when I maybe do a promotional raffle, um, to think about the people, um, maybe I'm hosting an online class and I do a raffle and there's, of course, everybody wants free stuff. So everybody's putting their name in the raffle, right? And I have this tendency to feel like I want to actually give the item to somebody who's really interested in the oils, right? Um, and so I've thought that before, like, oh, you know, I should just maybe just, you know, instead of actually picking a name, I should just give it to so-and-so because they might actually buy a kit and blah, blah, blah in my head, right? Okay, so that's not integrity. And luckily the Lord has usually works it out in my head where I'm like, nope, you need to put the names all in a hat and draw a real raffle because that's what you said you were going to do. So sometimes... um she talks about the cost of compromise. Like we may think we can get somewhere quicker or faster or d by doing things like that, but that's not having integrity and, and the Lord sees and he knows. And I mean, basically I feel like as I was thinking about that, um, I know raffles, they really mess with your brain. <laughs> I mean, so it really comes down to um, the golden rule, right? We need to treat others as we would want to be treated. And when I see and I enter a raffle, I'm certainly expecting that my name is going in the hat and I have as equal of chance as everyone else to win whatever the heck it is, right? So if that's what I expect and what I want, then I need to do that same thing for other people. And this is just a small example, but one that I have personally wrestled with in my head. And, you know, I've had some ideas like, oh, it'd be better to do it this way. It would be smarter, you know, because, I mean, in business, you're always trying to be smart and savvy and, you know, make sure you're, you're doing the best you can, right? But we have to trust the Lord and, and like the verses that I read, that he will honor and bless when we have integrity. Um, 
and maybe it might be a little slower, you know, getting to the goal, but then like Zig Ziglar said, when we're, well, he didn't really say this, but my vision was we're standing on the mountain looking where we were and how we got to our goal and we're looking back and we have a, a really um, a happy heart because we're like, I didn't do anything that I didn't cross any lines that I'm regretting or I didn't, you know, lie, cheat and steal to get here, you know, or whatever. There's not the guilt. So, um, she talks, I think she talks about God honoring, um, that's right, Renisha. Yes. <laughs> um, she talks about God honoring, um, integrity and, um, so, I don't know if she did in the video because I didn't get to the end, but in the book she does. And I really like that because sometimes it can feel like you can be making all these right choices um, and, you know, just trying to follow the Lord and, and how he's leading. And you can see other people and they're getting to where you want to be or, you know, in life there's other people who are successful that, you know, you see them and they're not making all these right choices and you feel like, hey, Lord. Like, what about me? And it's like, just to know that he is, he honors that and he loves us and what he has got for us, what it might not be what they have, but what he has for each one of us is, is perfect and it's good. And we have to trust, you know, what he's doing. So tangent there, but okay. The last thing that I found was this story and I don't know, I didn't get to the end of her video, so I don't know if she covers it, but I was looking for stories, um, on integrity and I found this one and I thought it was really cool and it really made me think so I'm just gonna share it with you and I was gonna print it out and read it to you but my printer is out of ink so I'm gonna do a sum summon it up for you and hopefully I don't screw it up or leave out the punchline or whatever so Lord help me it's called the Emperor's Seed and basically it's a story about an emperor back in the old east and he did not have an heir or a son to um, inherit his, um, you know, kingdom. And so he decided to go to his village and um, get all the children together. And he gave them each a seed. And he told them that they should take it and water it and plant it. And he would gather them together one year later. And he would look at how all of their seeds were doing and based off of what he saw he would choose one of them to be his heir to his kingdom and so there was a kid named Ling I think was his name and so he gets his seed and he goes home and his mother helps him get a pot and get the dirt and he plants the seed and he waters it and he, you know, he's waiting like a week or so and nothing's happening. And he just keeps watering it and, um, you know, do, watering it every day and do, making sure it has sun and putting it where it needs to be. And still nothing's happening. And, you know, a couple months go by and he's walking around the village and all these other children have these pots and these beautiful plants are starting to grow and some of them are even starting to bud. And he is really stressing out because he's like, what is going on with my seed? I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. And so he's talking to his mom and his mom is like, you know, the only thing you can do is water it and give it sunshine and just be consistent and keep doing that and hope that it grows. And so he does that. And a year later, you know, he still has a barren pot, but he has been faithful to water it and to do everything in his ability to make this plant grow. And it's time for all the children to bring their pots to the, you know, castle or whatever the heck it is where the emperor is. And they all bring them in and there's all these amazing, beautiful plants and flowers and all kinds of cool things. And he's, you know, humiliated because he's got this empty barren pot, but his mom told him, you should just go, you know, you gotta go, you did, you were faithful, you know, just bring it up there because the emperor wants all the children there. So he goes and the emperor comes out and he's walking around and he's looking at all, you know, the plants. And of course, all the other children are like kind of smirking and staring at him and like laughing at his little empty barren pot with dirt. And he's just like, 
wants to crawl into his skin and just get out of there. But he's standing there and the emperor kind of comes by him and he's like, what happened here? And he's like, sir, you know, I'm, I'm, or your majesty or whatever, you know, I'm so sorry. You know, I watered it every day and I put it in the sun and I thought I did everything right and it just never grew. And so he just, the emperor just like kind of shrugs and keeps going. And so he's like, you know, feeling humiliated. Well, at the end, the emperor comes out and he says, you know, all of you have such beautiful, wonderful plants or something to that effect. And he's like, which is really surprising because the seeds that I gave you were boiled to a point where there would be no life in them. They couldn't grow. And so he's like, but there was one boy, Ling, who had integrity and he didn't, um, you know, try and lie and so I mean the the basis of the story and so he picks him as the heir right and the basis of the story is that all the other kids and their parents must have schemed when the two weeks came and nothing was happening they were like how are we gonna get this plant you know and so they all went and got seeds and put them in other seeds and got them and so the king the emperor was looking for a kid who had integrity and Ling was the one because he was just doing, yeah, right for Ling, right? He was just doing the right thing, even though he wasn't seeing what he thought should be happening, right? And I don't know, I heard that story and it just made me think of, you know, our Lord and God and just that sometimes in this world, what we're seeing might not be what everyone else is like, you know, this is victory, this is success, this is whatever, but we just continue to do the right thing and have integrity and that God sees that and he's got amazing you know things for us in the future right in heaven wherever whatever it's not about here so so that um, is what I think about integrity and obviously I feel like we've all failed at this right we're human we're sinners so we don't always have integrity and the cool thing is is that you know there's the verse that um, you know, says that if we confess our sins to him, he's faithful to cleanse us and forgive us. And so that's the awesome part about grace is that, you know, I feel like we can grow in integrity um, because the more we bring to him those thoughts in our heads, like my raffle thoughts and say, Lord, here's what my heart wanted to do. Um, you know, that he'll be faithful to work that stuff out of us. So... Those are my thoughts on integrity. I think it's really important. And like I said, I feel like we tend to, I tend to gravitate towards people who I see have that because I respect them and I feel security because I can trust them. So the more that we can have integrity, I feel like the more comfortable other people are gonna be around us when they start to see that um, we let our yes be yes and our no be no. And this can take some um, being intentional, I think too, like ever, you know, these all build off of each other. And when we're intentional and we aren't a people pleaser and we can look at the things that are being asked of us and, and say, I can do that and I can do that well. So I will commit to that instead of saying yes to everything. And then like kind of dropping the ball in a lot of areas. Hi Zeke. I can't see you, but hi. So anyway, I don't know. Those are my thoughts on integrity. And I didn't do anything funny at the beginning of this video this time, so I apologize <laughs> for that. Oh, okay, guys. Well, I hope you have a good Sunday. I should probably. Everybody else always at the end of the video tells people to put something in the comments, and I don't have anything to say to put in the comments. So somebody write something that we should put in the comments. Does that sound good? All right. I love you guys. Bye.